Good morning. Pastor Sean here. Today is Wednesday, March 9th, and this is your morning prayer. So let us begin. O Lord, open my lips, and my mouth shall declare your praise. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The Lord has redeemed his people. O come, let us worship him. O come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us make a joyful noise to the rock of our salvation. Let us come into his presence with thanksgiving. Let us make a joyful noise to him with songs of praise. For the Lord is a great God and a great King above all gods. In his hand are the depths of the earth. The heights of the mountains are his also. The sea is his, for he made it, and his hand formed the dry land. O come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord our Maker. For he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The Lord has redeemed his people. O come, let us worship him. All right, today we have Mark chapter 4, verses 1 through 20. Again he began to teach beside the sea, and a very large crowd gathered about him, so that he got into a boat and sat in it on the sea, and while the whole crowd was beside the sea on the land. And he was teaching them many things in parables. And in his teaching he said to them, Listen, a sower went out to sow. And as he sowed, some seed fell along the path, and the birds came and devoured it. Other seed fell on rocky ground, where it did not have much soil, and immediately it sprang up, since it had no depth of soil. And when the sun rose, it was scorched, and since it had no root, it withered away. Other seed fell among thorns, and the thorns grew up and choked it, and it yielded no grain. And other seeds fell into good soil, and produced grain, growing up and increasing and yielding thirtyfold, and sixtyfold, and a hundredfold. And he said, He who has ears to hear, let him hear. And when he was alone, those around him with, uh, with the twelve um, about him, asked him about the parables. And he said to them, To you has been given the secret of the kingdom of God. But for those outside, everything is in parables, so that they may indeed see but not perceive, and they may indeed hear but not understand, lest they should turn and be forgiven. And he said to them, Do you not understand this parable? How then will you understand all the parables? The sower sows the word. And these, are the ones that don't, and these are the ones along the path where the word is sown. When they hear, Satan immediately comes and takes away the word that is sown in them. And these are the ones sown on rocky ground. The ones who, when they hear the word, immediately receive it with joy. And then they have no root in themselves, but endure it for a while. And then when tribulation or persecution arises on account of the word, immediately they fall away. And others are the ones uh, sown among thorns. They are those who hear the word. But the cares of the world and the deceitfulness of riches and its desires for other things enter in and choke the word, and it proves unfruitful. But those that were sown on the good soil are the ones who hear the word and accept it and bear fruit, thirtyfold, sixtyfold, and a hundredfold. In many various ways, God spoke to his people of old by the prophets, but now in these last days he's spoken to us by his son. So we always have this text, well, once a year, every time it comes around, and, uh, so every time it comes around, it requires the, uh, the usual explanation that um, the, the proper understanding of this text is not what kind of soil are you going to be. This is not about you becoming something or, or anything like that. This parable is about the word, how the word works, how, how the word is sown, how it, is, how it goes out, and how it is received. Um, and you can kind of see how it's not about what, what kind of soil will you be or, or do you need to try to be, in that um, we represent we are represented in this as soil, as in you can't do much. <laughs> soil just kind of sits there. It is where it is, um, you know, or, or whatever, you know, it's rocks on the path. Rocks can't do anything. They can't change this, that, and the other. So um, this parable is really just about... Um, who sows it, how he sows it, and how it is received. And um, you, you can, this is further evidenced by um, when he begins to explain the parable and he quotes um, Isaiah, where he says, you know, to, you have been given the secrets of the kingdom. You know, you are given it so you can understand it. Everybody else does not. He says, so that, that those may see but not perceive, hear but not understand. Um the point is that the word of God goes out and it, it takes root in those who it takes root in. That God chooses those to, to hear and receive it and others are not. Now we don't know 
why some are chosen, others are not. We don't know. Um, you know, the 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 why behind it is is a mystery to us. It's one of these mysteries of God that we don't understand. You know, why 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 does He speak in parables so that purposely that some may not understand? It's like we don't know. We know that He does. Um, and for those who understand the parables, who who have been given, you know, faith and and you know received the Holy Spirit through baptism, it's wonderful, great, celebrate that. Yes, um, yeah, <laughs> that's about as far as you can push it. Um, you, you you don't get to know exactly, you know, the the, the hidden inner workings of God, but um, you know, even in in the uh, parable that he tells you, you, it shows that you know out of four possible um, receptions of the word, only one of those receives it and, and takes root. Um, so the, the, and if you go throughout the whole old, whole old Testament, I mean, this idea of, you know, many are called, few are chosen, the a remnant is, is that which is saved. Um, this pretty much holds throughout all of scripture that not everybody, not everybody um, believes, not everyone accepts forgiveness not everybody um you know is is part of the kingdom some are are left out now um this could take you in a couple places either to be re resigned to the idea that well if you're one of them you know you believe in jesus okay well you can't help anybody else because they're either in or they're out there's nothing you can do about it so don't bother god has already chosen and if he has chosen you it'll happen regardless of what you do this is a tack that some some christians take um, or you can take the, um, the course of, you know what, I have no idea who God has chosen. Um, I know that he has chosen me because I'm baptized. Um, I'm thankful for that. And so the, my neighbor who wasn't baptized, who, who does not believe in Jesus, I don't know whether or not God has chosen him. You know what? I'm going to assume that God has, and he needs, he or she needs me to share the gospel with him. <laughs> err on the side of caution and say, you know what, I'm just going to take the, the approach that maybe I should, um, maybe I should share the gospel with just about anybody. That's a good, safe option. Um, and certainly what we're called to do is to share Jesus with those around us. So, um, so yeah, this is, um, it, this kind of the beginning of, of hard teaching from, from Jesus that, um, you know, we, we don't quite fully understand. We don't necessarily like hearing, you know, because we want to know, you know, we, we would love that everybody is saved. We want to know that everybody, all, all good people, you know, all the people we consider good are saved, no matter what they believe in. That's what we want. Um, but the reality is salvation is through Christ alone. So, um, to that end, um, you know, we, we evangelize, we, we develop relationships with people to, to, have the opportunity to share with them Christ, you know, um, I think that's a better way than just kind of going out there and just blurting it all out, establishing a relationship with somebody, caring about them, showing that you care about them so that uh, they would be receptive to what you would have to share. But then um, just assume that, you know what, maybe God has chosen them and maybe I'm the means through which he's planting seeds. And that's really all, all all we do here is is we, we we help scatter the seed you know we're, we're not the ones who make it grow we're not the ones in charge of um you know anything about having you know other than here's some seed <laughs> um you know we 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 just plant those seeds and, and pray that they take root that the holy spirit works through them um so, so there you go it's 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 not always about you. <laughs> I mean, it is. Um, at least, you know, you, you, you who believe are, are the good soil. So that, that is, it is talking, referring to you there. But um, it's not a question of what do you need to be. It's what does God do? And you see that his word does exactly what he intends his word to do. It goes out everywhere. Okay. His word is not defective. Um, his word accomplishes exactly what it sets out to do. And it sets out to ensure that it takes root in some people. Okay, so don't try to guess which ones are are in and which ones are out. Assume that you just need to be the one scattering seed, and uh, that's a that's a good place to be. All right. Well, let us pray. 
O Lord, our Heavenly Father, Almighty and Everlasting God, you have safely brought us to the beginning of this day. Defend us in the same with your mighty power, and grant that this day we fall into no sin, neither run into any kind of danger, but that all of our doings, being ordered by your governance, may be righteous in your sight. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Now taught by our Lord and trusting his promises, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Almighty and merciful Lord, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, bless and preserve you. Amen. Blessings to you on this Wednesday. Hope uh, hope you're going to have a great day. Hope everything goes well. Um, and uh, it's, it's midweek, so we've got our Lenten service tonight. So if you uh, do not have a church to go to uh, for service tonight, you are more than welcome to um, either come to Ascension if you're local. Otherwise, you may catch our live stream um, at 7 o'clock. So have a great day. Until tomorrow, peace be with you.